In my last video on Dragon Age Dreadwolf, I spoke about the many things I'm looking forward to in this long-awaited fantasy RPG, but I try to take an honest, measured approach here on this channel. And unfortunately, over the last several years, a number of issues have arisen at Bioware that have me a bit worried about the game. So in the interest of keeping it real, let's take a look at all the things I'm concerned about in Dragon Age Dreadwolf. First off, as I mentioned in a comment on my previous video, Bioware has a Ship of Theseus problem. For the uninitiated, the Ship of Theseus is an age-old philosophical question about a ship whose pieces have been replaced and rebuilt until nothing from the original ship remains. And if all of the pieces have been replaced, is it still, in fact, the original ship? Is it still the Ship of Theseus? Or is it now something else entirely? Over the last several years, there's been a massive amount of turnover at Bioware. Turnover in the video game industry is unfortunately pretty common, but it's been happening at a far more noticeable extent for the creators of Mass Effect and Dragon Age. Since the release of Inquisition, Bioware has lost David Gator, Mike Laidlaw, and Mary Kirby, who did get to work on Dreadwolf, but was laid off a few months ago. Mark Darrow left, but he did come back to help finish the game. All of this is to say that many of the people who made Bioware games what they were, and by extension, the Dragon Age franchise, are gone. So the question is, without these key staff members, is Bioware still Bioware? It remains to be seen. And after 10 years worth of turnover, Dreadwolf has the unfortunate burden of having to answer this incredibly complicated question. Fortunately, I do have to say that if you've read To Winter Nights, it's clear that those working on the game, at least from a writing perspective, really do care about Thetis. Patrick Weeks and John Epler are great writers, and they seem like genuinely good folks based on what I've seen of them on Twitter. I do think there's a silver lining here, that even if the ship of Bioware has replaced all of its pieces, its soul might stay the same. But it's not just the staff that have turned over in the time since Inquisition, the game itself has too. The reason we haven't seen a new Dragon Age game in 10 years is because Dragon Age Dreadwolf is the third incarnation of the game that was supposed to be Dragon Age 4. Games getting cancelled happens all the time, but rarely are they restructured and reimagined the way Dragon Age 4 has. As detailed by multiple sources, it was originally supposed to be a heist game set in the Deventer Imperium, where the main character would be working for the Inquisition to steal elven artifacts from powerful Tevinter Magisters. But EA wanted the next Dragon Age to be a live service game, and didn't see the potential for those elements in this plan, so they sent Bioware back to the drawing board. Around the time of the 2020 Game Awards teaser, it was reported that the game was going to be a straight up live service title, and looking back at that teaser, it's fairly easy to imagine how that might have worked. Finally, Following the success of Jedi Fallen Order and the failure of Anthem, sources indicated that EA was open to turning the next Dragon Age back into a single player experience, and thus, plans changed yet another time. So not only has Dreadwolf been in development for the better part of a decade, it's taken the form of three entirely different games during that time. Naturally, this leaves one to wonder if elements of the other two incarnations will still make their way into the finished product and if the game might feel a bit disjointed as a result. In particular, as pleased as I am that Dreadwolf won't be a live service game, I'm concerned that it might end up being crystal clear to players that it was intended to be that way at some time, that the ghost of the live service elements might linger in its narrative structure and quest design. This was actually an issue I had with Inquisition, as many of its quests felt like they belonged in an MMO. If Dreadwolf ends up feeling like a live service game without any live service elements, and not a game that was rebuilt from the ground up after the changeover to a single player game, I could see this being even more of a problem. Furthermore, all of this touches on a gameplay identity crisis that the Dragon Age franchise has been struggling with ever since EA took over Bioware. Dragon Age Origins was an old school CRPG with tactical combat. Dragon Age 2 sought to speed up this style, make it a bit more responsive and exciting to new audiences. But in doing so, they removed many of the more strategic elements, including the much beloved tactical view during combat. Dragon Age Inquisition brought back the tactical view, but because of the MMO style structure, 
the gameplay felt very grindy. And though we haven't seen any official gameplay from Dreadwolf yet, some did leak a little over a year ago. In the leaks, we saw what appeared to be God of War style combat. Fast paced, triple A blockbuster style action. With dodging, fast and strong strikes, and special moves. And there seems to be no way to control your companions, a long time staple of the franchise. This is obviously a huge departure from what fans are accustomed to. I love God of War. I thought Ragnarok was one of the best games to come out that year. But that's not why I play Dragon Age. I play Dragon Age so I can round up an adventuring party from the little found family I've gathered, make tactical decisions, and kill tainted gods. Not so I can be a great warden cosplaying as Kratos. Now, to be fair, in a vacuum, I don't hate this change. I could see it being fun. If this were a brand new game series, I certainly wouldn't be complaining about it at all. But without the option to control our companions and use them tactically, it just won't feel much like Dragon Age to me. It'd be nice if we were able to give them orders with the push of a button, the same way Kratos can call on Atreus or Freya to shoot arrows. But I'm not going to hold my breath on that one. And finally, all this coalesces into my last point, that in the pursuit of turning Dragon Age into something different, EA and Bioware have ceded ground to other franchises. It's ironic to me that just days after announcing that Dreadwolf will finally be revealed this summer, a game that strays the furthest yet from the original vision of the series, Baldur's Gate 3, a former Bioware property that delivers on a modernized version of that original vision, took home Game of the Year at the Game Awards. If the reveal of Dreadwolf shows off a game that isn't what fans have been waiting for for the last 10 years, if it shows that EA has determined that they want Dragon Age to be something different than what we've come to expect, then many of their fans might decide that they'd rather play a different game entirely. Overall, I remain very excited for this game. I'm invested in the lore of Dragon Age, in the return of the Evan Uris, in discovering the truth behind the origins of the Darkspawn and the Black City. I'm looking forward to the story, to a confrontation with Solus ten years in the making, to finding out what's become of the world my Inquisitor left behind. But I have to be honest in saying that there's a fair bit here that has me pretty worried. Here's hoping the full reveal this summer will alleviate those concerns. Until then, stay tuned for more news on Dragon Age Dreadwolf. I'll be covering it every step of the way, and I even have some content for Dragon Age Origins on the way in the next few weeks. See you guys next time!